Welcome to another uh, fabulous episode of our monthly Nesby PI6 Spotlight uh, interviews. And we are featuring for the month of October, our lovely director for the PI6, Diamond Williams. And uh, to get started, Diamond, state your name. Well, we all know you're Diamond Williams. But state <laughs> your name, your position, and the company slash industry that you are with. Oh, okay. Um, so again, I'm Diamond Williams. I currently work as a data engineer for Slalom Build, um, and it's consulting. Awesome. All right. So how did you get interested, uh, Diamond, in this type of work or career? through your collegiate experience? To be honest, uh, I didn't know that this industry really existed going through my collegiate experience. It wasn't until I graduated and started working that I kind of got exposed to data and the power of data. A lot of the projects that I was working on, though they were quality based, always had um, some type of data or statistical focus with them. Mm -hmm. And that kind of led me to uh, want to learn more. I've always had an interest in IT, but um, I never saw them as the same thing, that IT and data. Um, but once I started working um, on different projects, and um, I, I think the project that like kind of catapulted me into this was I built a SharePoint dashboard that did a lot of data uh, tracking. And I was able to look at trending and kind of develop more predictive uh, outlook on uh, unplanned downtime. So that really was like, hey, I like this data thing. I want to learn more about it. And um, that kind of cascaded me to get to this point. OK, very good. And before we get to the next question, I just wanted to state uh, that I'm Monique Lake, and I am a part of the Nesby PI SIG as communications director. So I just wanted to make sure I let all the viewers know that <laughs> if they don't know. So number two question, um, how have you dealt with being an African-American female in the field of data analytics? Oh, wow. Um, so how can I say this? Working in traditional engineering was challenging because um, every company that I, I've worked for as a traditional engineer, it felt like I was, I didn't fit their mold. Mm -hmm. I didn't fit the traditional look of an uh, engineer. And um, data being that is so new, so up and coming, there is really no um, avatar for what you look like. It's really about... Um, what you can produce and what you can do. Um, so I found more acceptance in this space uh, than traditional engineering, to be honest. Uh, I've had more positive uh, working relationships than um, negative ones in this space as well. Um, and being that it's data, I found my ambition and my desire to stay ambitious and learning is more welcome here than in traditional manufacturing or engineering where it's been like, oh, we've done this for 30 plus years. That's the way um, things are gonna be. Whereas data, it's always about how can we um, be a leader in this space? How can we um, optimize an output? So knowledge and expanding your knowledge and skill set is something that's literally in the title. Interesting response. Very, uh, very interesting. So would you say that um, this uh, type of field uh, is more progressive in uh, what, uh, in, in, you know, across different industries as, uh, as, as opposed to other uh, fields in, in engineering? Absolutely. Um, for example, I, I just started a new opportunity with Slalom build and I've been there two three weeks and um I'm literally already getting my first certification and whereas training professional development and personal development was something I literally had to beg in other industries this one is like okay if you want to take the time while you're on the bench which is meaning um where you don't have a project uh to learn get a certification uh be exposed to different technology that's welcome and warranted 
are welcome and wanted uh, versus being in um, traditional manufacturing or engineering, it was like proving, it was always a business case on why I needed it. Right. Even Lean Six Sigma Greenbelt, I had to prove why there was a necessity for a quality engineering role. Right. Awesome. Awesome. So uh, over the course of your career thus far, um, what correlations or you know similarities are you finding with data analytics and process improvement? They're very much the same. Honestly, when you look at what data analytics from a data visualization standpoint, um, it's always about trending. How can you optimize a specific output? When you look at data quality, it's about improving the quality of the data. So metadata, which is the information about the data, mm -hmm. how can you improve that so that people who are making business driven decisions are making that with sound data? Um, and just like in any, any uh, industry, if you have, you know, the traditional saying garbage in is garbage out, mm -hmm. that translates into data um, so much. Uh, the, even when you look at the dimming cycle or plan to check mm -hmm. at, that's still uh, correlated into data. It may be titled something different, but those same principles align. So I've seen so much synergy in my background as a quality engineer with my future um, as a data engineer, uh, it's pretty uncanny to, to think that there would be a, a intersection for both of those. Mm -hmm. Very good, very good. So um, we all know you've been in uh, Nesby for some time now. So Ooh. how uh, do you uh, think that uh, Nesby has helped you uh, in your career and how has NSB uh, as an organization uh, propelled uh, your, your career from one position to another? Um, there are two organizations that I can attribute everything that I've done in my life mm -hmm. to, and NSB is one of those. Uh, the first one being Youth Exploring Science Program through the St. Louis Science Center, which actually exposed me to NSB. Um, and the interaction of those two organizations, one helped me get through high school and Nesby helped me get through college. Uh, mm -hmm. I can't imagine um, my experience at a PWI without Nesby. Uh, the first time I went to a Nesby conference, which was in um, Toronto, and I saw 10,000 Black engineers, I cried. Mm -hmm. um, because I'm in these classrooms where I'm one of one, um, I'm always challenged. I'm, I felt like imposter syndrome from class to class and never fully accepted. And I go to, I, I remember it like it was yesterday. I'm on like the, the escalator going down to the workshop and I just see a sea of people that look like me. And I cried because I was like, this is where I belong. And since what was that, 2009, 2010, I, I've been in Nesby trying to find ways to give back what they've given to me, which is just hope. Um, I never got that in, in undergrad, and Nesby gave me that. Outstanding, outstanding. I can definitely uh, correlate with, uh, with that sentiment, because I feel the same way for as long <laughs> as I've been in the organization as well. So excellent, excellent response. So what lessons have you learned along the way in your career uh, from graduation uh, to the present? Um, so anybody who knows me knows I love Batman and Iron Man, right? And the biggest thing that I've seen with them and with my career is being adaptable. Mm -hmm. um, anytime that they faced a uh, difficulty they may have gotten defeated by it, but the second time they always found a way to adapt and overcome. Yes. And that's literally been the theme for collegiate, my collegiate experience, my theme for work um, is just being adaptable and always um, keeping that same interest that I had that, it, it, that made me want to be an engineer and understanding and learning more and never getting complacent. Um, the, the crazy part about technology right now, and this is pre-COVID, is that it's growing rapidly. And now when you think of the introduction of COVID, 
there's a lot of um, changes that are happening at a very high pace that, you know, um, basically got accelerated because of COVID and being in a space where you're constantly learning what's new, what's out there, what's, you know, a dying technology. So you're not um, investing time and energy to, to something that's not value added. So um, being adaptable and never stop learning. I concur. Uh, <laughs> never once uh, in my corporate career and then going into being a STEM educator, 14 years ago, if someone would have told me that I would be doing virtual teaching and learning of a, of a science area such as chemistry or physics, I would have been <laughs> sure. And, yeah. and we're doing it. And uh, I can definitely, um, definitely relate to that response because uh, if I hadn't have been exposed to certain technologies and an engineering background and an IT background, there is no way I would have been able to catch on so quick. Yeah. Yes, I can definitely understand that. Uh, so my last question, uh, as you think about where you've been and the roads you've traveled and where you are now and being in a strong like influencer to the next generation, what would you uh, pass down to the next generation as they create their pathway to success? Um, I would pass down my favorite quote, and this is paraphrased um, by Albert Einstein, and it's, it's not that he was smarter than, he, than anyone, it's just he tended to stick with problems longer. So not giving up is what I would pass down. Um, and that quote has held me through a lot of things, it's just not giving up and persevering. Excellent, excellent, excellent words of, of advice, uh, especially to our younger generations. Um, I was just talking with uh, another colleague of mine yesterday, and I thought back to the year 2000 and how the current generation of kids have seen nothing but constant change. So yeah. guiding them and helping them get through those changes will be key to uh, yeah to their path. Absolutely. Being un uncomfortable with being, or being comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yes. Uh, is, is basically the wave, because it's like the technology that we knew and we cleave to um, is a dying thing, right. you know? Like every week it's a new trend, yes. it's a new app, it, it's something different in the pace of technology is only getting faster and the reliance on it is only getting stronger. So having um, a, a really good base and understanding what the data is saying is really important. Um, don't get me wrong, artificial intelligence and all that stuff is really great, but it still needs human interaction yes. um, to make sound decisions. So um, yeah, that's my TED talk. <laughs> all right. I mean, you know, there may be an open channel for you. Don't, uh, you know, there, there may be an opportunity. Hey, sign me up. I'll see you I would vision. love to do it. <laughs> well, thank you, Diamond, for uh, your time this evening. And we're so happy that you're going to be our October Spotlight member. And uh, we wish you nothing but su success and longevity. And um, we just thank you for your time for this uh, interview session. No, I, I'm honored to do it and I'm honored to serve with you guys and uh, be a leader. I've grown so much because of you guys, so I, I genuinely appreciate it. All right, great. All right, then.